and welcome to a very special Gundam Battle Operation 2 featuring the Daspada. Uh, Daspada? I don't know how to say it. It's the Squizzidee's Brother Unit, or the Sunny D Gundam as I call it. Another unit from the Titans Project Gundam attempt, and is an escort to the mobile armor like the Squizzidee or the Sunny D Gundam was. In game, it's a 550 to 600 cost ground and space capable general with a ballistic resistance of 15, a beam resistance of 30, a melee resistance of 20, a range strength of 29, a melee strength of 26, a movement speed of 130, and a thrust gauge of 65. For parts, we have close range of 17, medium of 14, and long range of 10. The unit is actually quite good at mid-range fighting and not too bad in a melee fight though i would suggest being uh, a little bit careful with its use in such for equipment we don't have any optional weapons just higher levels of some of these weapons so we have the despada wb or weapon binder melee cannon and it is a heat-based weapon at 80%. It does a thousand damage. I believe this does a basic stagger. Then we have, the, of course, the standard issue beam saber or whiffle bat, whichever you prefer. Sometimes a nerf bat. We got the Despada Head Vulcans. 200 range, 30 ammo, and 90 uh, damage. They're effectively one-year war, if not slightly. They're like one-year war enhanced. Uh, head Vulcans. Not great, not bad. The double beam sabers, so you can do a little bit of that combo goodness. Though, if you're going to do that, I do suggest getting the stun with this, doing these, or working in the Psy, uh, the psy Rods to get into the melee. However you feel, you can figure it out in the various ways it does. Then we have the Despada Weapon Binder Missile Launcher. It fires a burst of three missiles. It does okay damage. I mostly use it to annoy people. And the range is okay. <laughs> then we have the Despada Weapon Binder Beam Cannon times two. 20 heat percent and 400 damage at 350 range. This is basically rapid fire. They will shoot like a burst of, again, about three lasers, though I might be wrong. Does decent chip damage. Then we have the Despada Weapon Binder Large Missiles. This shoots two wire-guided missiles that will follow where you're within reason, within where your uh, targeting reticle is. So you can guide them up and then down into a target. I use them to uh, kind of ferret out people, though they are pretty useful for what they are. Then we have the Psy Rods. They are a Psycom U walk-on weapon. They fire out and they're okay. <laughs> they can do some decent damage. Um, though I would say if you are in a fight with somebody and you're not in melee, when they get knocked down, switching to these and then firing them off can be pretty nice and keep you from having to necessarily get into melee range when you can get some more damage in there without worrying about messing up your guys or having uh, their bodies block your sweet damage. For skills, we have Leg Shock Absorber Level 3, Maneuver Armor, Emergency Evasion System, Anti-Blast Stabilizers, Flight Control Program Level 2, High Performance Balancers, High Spec Ambec Level 2, Forced Injector Level 2, always nice, Melee Combo Controller, and weapon pack binder special cushioning which lowers the damage taken by 40 percent when shot in those two gigantic arm uh <laughs> packs you have on either side of the unit um my opinion of the unit is it is a very very good mid to close range general support and that's what I'm going to call it, a general support. It's capable of mixing things up with some of the more experienced pilots. It can be a monster, but for most people, it's going to handle in a kind of secondary uh, kind of frontliner. It's there. It works better with a partner. 
it's very good at supporting, oddly enough, like in canon, a support unit like the Squizzity. Once teamed up with a support, this unit can be maddening. And it's a good unit to follow up from a raid. So, in general, I think it's a good unit. And it might be a little bit too much for some folks, though. Because it just doesn't behave as you would expect it to. So, let's see how it does in the match to come. Welcome to the match, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. And we will... Uh... What can I say about this unit that hasn't been said? It is an interesting one, and um, I've had good games and bad games in it, but I think this is one of the more interesting. Um, in terms to some stuff that happens in the last couple minutes, so um, I challenge you to see how long I can live, wink wink, at a very low health amount. So we're going to start out by charging forward. We're a general, so I wanted to try to establish a bit of a front line as uh, we got uh, going here. Um, sometimes you have to trust people. And we're going to try to get a lock, but he backed out of it. And we're going to try to push up a bit, be a little aggressive, uh, fill out what we're doing. We got the support there. We're going to shoot our siren uh, rods. I keep forgetting what they are. And we're going to just start uh, picking away at them get a little bit of a shot there. Take a couple shots from uh, the Psycom. A little bit more shooting there. And of course, uh, some of our guys are being a little bit uh, unwilling to move up, but we've allowed, I believe, one of our guys to uh, come up behind that one. So I'm going to move forward, come in, and put a little bit of that melee to use. As you can see, you can do a little bit of combo in there. We're going to do some work on that uh, Kai. We're going to throw some missiles in there. Do not sleep on the Gyarados Kai. It can be quite the pain, as you can see. We're going to continue to outgun him a bit. Um, hit our uh, sibling suit down the way. And we're going to keep switching. We're trying to put pressure on with our guy there. And we should have um, opened up enough we're going to do some serious damage in there. And we're just going to square off with our twin, catch him with the stun, and we're going to come in and finish him off with double nerf bats. So, as you can see, the unit is quite capable of keeping some pressure on at mid-range. And, you know, uh, it does really, really well with some backup. Now any unit can. We're going to shoot the tracking ones, and we're going to trust in a reticle and get a little bit of shot in on there. And we get destroyed by tradition, as is tradition. So we're spawning at D. Um, five and three and five are back at A, and we got our other two guys hanging around at the uh, the normal sniping area. We're going to fire those, and we're going to miss just a little bit. We don't have the range to uh, exchange fire with that support, so we're just going to back up a little bit. We're going to move over here and help to uh, our guy take our twin out again. We come up and we're going to fire early and miss, but we're going to play with uh, a little bit of the cover of the building. Let's throw that Vulcan in there. Fire some missiles. And we're going to be a little too late on the rapid fire beams. We're going to go ahead and shoot those and guide them in. If you know you're going to get uh, staggered, shooting the uh, guided missiles can be a good way to get some of that damage in there. So, we're just going to keep throwing fire now. Ooh, we almost got him. And we're just going to keep playing this. Now, this is usually how these maps kind of devolve, so I'm not particularly fond of it as you see a bomb has been planted on our base. Probably why uh, two of them were trying to uh, scout that area out, but you know what? Screw it. Sometimes you get a commanding position, miss on the guided, catch him with the melee. We're really beating ourselves up here. It's not a good thing. Uh, you know, always help when you have to beat yourself up. But uh, we're going to use the, the area a little bit. We're going to just give a little stab in that direction. Let our guy get some uh, time to catch up on him. And we're just going to continue working him over. 
Let our guy who wants to go into the melee, do the melee thing, shoot some missiles in, and return back to our firing line. Four's gonna back out, we're gonna fire our side rods out there. They're not gonna quite do much, and then there uh, goes a Kai would be such a pain with that beam rifle. We're a little low, but we're gonna fire the missiles. What we're doing is just rotating through and keeping fire on. Because the more time they waste firing at us, the less time they have on um, putting pressure on our other guys there. So, we're just going to continue doing what we're doing. We're uh, not going to get hit with those uh, Faust, which is always a good thing. You want to watch your spacing. Catch him with the stagger. Bounce back. Now, we're pretty low. A good hit could do some serious damage to us. And I'm trying to keep as much within reason. There we go with those guided missiles again. They have really good range. I'm trying to, as, with as much reason as possible, keep them um, focused on our lines. We're beating ourselves up again. Never a good thing. And uh, the Gyaradoga Kai is going to put a little bit of pressure on us with its rifle. But he's going to get distracted. There's probably a butterfly or something. Um, and he's going to back out. And uh, we're going to come back in, take a few shots, and we're just going to keep playing with that little bit of cover and popping up and firing. A good old battle tech uh, tactic I learned from back in the day. Um, so we're, we're doing a little heat management, rotating for our stuff. We've been hit with the napalm strike of the support, and that's going to render us to one health at the, uh, little, let's just say the one minute 40s uh, mark. And let's see how long we actually stay alive. So we're going to deploy those rods as he gets knocked down, like I said in the beginning part. It's a really good way to add in a little bit of damage. We're not going to hit with those missiles, but we're going to get a little bit of that being goodness in there as he counters four, unfortunately. And we're going to miss as he moves forward. I can't be too aggressive with this unit. Oh, we've almost got him knocked down. And four took him with him. Nice shot for. At least I believe it was him to kind of. So we're gonna back out. Five is got the health we do not, so all we can do is throw some shots down there and try to support him how we can. Because uh honestly we could get one tapped by anything, including one year more Vulcans, just so you know. So they're uh, they're definitely putting pressure on him. We're just going to keep firing down the lane, and we're using cover as much as possible. And then we see some missiles from the right. It's, um, what is that, you know, I forget. Oh, well, whatever. This guy's going to come up, go for us. I believe it's a start gigan. We're going to come in, catch him with the melee, knock him down, take him out. Somehow we survived that, and we're going to turn our attention back this way. Five is still being a exceedingly great aggressive and so is two we're gonna follow them up a little bit fire those down and there's not really any targets and there we are still alive at one hp nice <clears throat> pardon me and there's the victory pose those are gigantic things on his arms no board posi position but second place thanks for joining